being the Deutsche Bank collection, which is today one of the most important collections of international photography and works on paper. Before we start, I have to say a few organizational points. Um, as you may have noticed, um, the audience is muted, but of course, you have the opportunity to post questions through the chat function. We will discuss them at the end of the interview. And yeah, of course, we hope that you have many questions. Should you have technical problems, please let us also know via chat. And last but not least, the talk is also being streamed via Facebook and YouTube, where you can follow it now or watch it later. Today, it's my great honor to introduce you to all to Andrea Galvani. He was born in 1930, oh, 1930s, much younger, 1973 in Italy and lives and works between New York City and Mexico City. He uses a cross-disciplinary approach that often draws upon scientific methodology, describing the limits of human beings in the context of science. He scrutinizes the relationship between art, science, and nature in a unique way. Galvani's works have been exhibited in the Whitney Museum, New York, the Fourth Moscow Biennial for Contemporary Art, and the Mart Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art of Trento and Rovereto, among many others, of course. We acquired a couple of works for the Deutsche Bank collection and at Fries New York in 2017, Galvani created an ambitious solo presentation for our VIP lounge. And right now you are showing an exhibition at the Macro in Rome until November 1st, I believe. Great. That's correct. Great. Today we are coming together on the occasion of the exhibition Time Present, which that is currently on display and shows international photography from the Deutsche Bank collection, including works by Andrea Galvani. In addition, we are also taking part in the program of the European Months of Photography, Germany's largest photo festival located in Berlin. And yeah, so let me again welcome Andrea Galvani. Thank you for joining us today. Um, may I start with a quick personal question? Where in the world are you right now? You are used to travel between the US, Mexico, Europe. So where are you right now? Surprisingly, I'm in Italy and I'm really happy to be here. I was supposed to be in New York and uh, I'm still here because my show in Rome was extended and I decided to stay longer. So for the first time in a long time, I actually spent some time in, in my own country. Okay, good. So when do you plan to go back to, to the US? Uh, I'm going to US in more or less a week from now. Uh, but you know, it's kind of difficult to predict <laughs> considering the situation. Crossed. Yeah. We'll manage, keep our fingers crossed. Um, coming to your work, um, in the current exhibition Time Present, we reflect the relationship between time and photography. Your artwork, and now I have difficulties, a challenge with a Spanish title, Levando una pepita de oro a la velocidad del sonido. In English, it's much, much easier for you me said bringing it, it gold. Sorry? You said it perfectly. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> bringing a gold nugget to the speed of sound. Um, this work shows a series of supersonic jets in a highly aesthetic way. How did you capture this image and what was the idea behind it? Well, it was a complicated project and I actually trained uh, for almost a year to, uh, to take this picture, I flew parallel uh, with, uh, you know, in, in a moment which pilots were training and I document the precise moment the plane is crossing, crossing the sound barrier. What's uh, the project, it, it was focused on uh, the possibility to visualize a separation between two different states. Uh, the plane is literally cut in two, uh, two parts. The mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. where you see this uh, VAP in the back is, uh, uh, is still in the world of sound. And the other part is entering in the, 
um, in, in, in the silence, in the total silence, in the concept of silence, uh, in absolute silence. So uh, it's a magic and super powerful moment. And photography was uh, the medium I decided to use because I want to monumentalize that moment and like offer the possibility to face it and contemplate it. So, so to, to clarify what we see right now, this is um, the half of the half of the plane and it's just in the moment where it, uh, it uh, uh, gets to the new, uh, in the new stage, so to say, between uh, and the limits. Right. Well, you see that pure, pure like that shape, that cone, define uh, the, the force, visualize the forces that are around the plane in the moment the, the plane is crossing um, the, uh, the barrier. And like, uh, uh, it's insanely beautiful to see how geometry show up and this symbol, like this pyramid that was part of uh, our culture um, for ever appear uh, inside a movement uh, like a migration from a state to a state. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there is a, a, a strong connection with symbolism and is a real phenomenal that appear for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. So it's really in the core of this kind of, uh, um, um, I know that you're interested in this between time and space, and this is something to, which can be made visible through photography. Yeah, photography, uh, in photography have the possibility to stop forever uh, a fragment, uh, a, a section of time. And uh, when I work, uh, I wanted to use that power. I want to make that specific instant, that specific fragment of time unique and powerful in the meaning of the potential, the mm -hmm. potential that is behind and forward it. Mm -hmm. So we're, when we are seeing these images, we are seeing a transformation we are seeing an unstable uh, manifestation of the power of nature and the mystery. And we still in the mystery, we understand it, we study it, but we still uh, mm -hmm. seeing a mystery. Mm -hmm. So th that's, that's, that's nature, that's life. We can see it, we can understand it, but we still have the feeling that we only know one part of the story, mm -hmm. one fragment of what we are seeing. The image after this is yeah. actually a, a, a sculpture. Mm -hmm. We can go on one. Yeah, a sculpture, yeah, the, yeah, this is when you bring it in a three-dimensional form, right? Yeah. Why, why do you do this? Do, do you want to expand a bit how you come to the three-dimensional form from the uh, two-dimensional photography? Exactly. Uh, what you see is a diagram and is a diagram that became three-dimensional again and is uh, 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 playing into the space and you visualize exactly the force and the original study of Mac on the waves that this phenomenon is producing and how they expand in the space. Uh, so it's a big uh, neon sculpture is about almost three meters and uh, like in the space, in the, in the darkness of the space is creating this three dimensional effect at the same time is a conceptual and really dry uh, drawing and a series of lines that connect with all of the invisible part of the phenomenal we saw uh, through the photographs. 
this is something we will encounter in your later works as well. And so it's, it's very interesting how you make the an invisible visible and translate it into a very, into very aesthetic forms, I believe. But we can jump on to the next uh, body of works, the Higgs Ocean you, you introduced, uh, you wanted to, to show in this context. And could, could, you, could you tell us a bit what is going on here and uh, uh, what are you doing? Or what is, is uh, this person doing? I, and uh, what is the story here behind it? This work of Higgs Ocean, it's called. Yeah, Higgs Ocean is a project, it's a complex, series of works. Uh, the body of work um, is uh, formed by like photograph, video, drawing, collages. The reason I want to show this is uh, because uh, the title of the show you have in Berlin, uh, Time Present mm -hmm. and the way I use photography. So uh, what you see is the documentation of an action that was done in 2009 I crossed the North Pole and uh, I was uh, crossing the North Pole and collecting solar energy with solar panels. And I then uh, storage the, the, the energy to turn on a flashlight able to reach the ionosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, the ionosphere in the, in the poles is closer to the surface of the sea, but it's also thinner and uh, what happened when you cross the ionosphere with a light, you basically allow the light to travel forever in the universe. Mm -hmm. So what I did was to allow the light that is coming from a human being to cross the space and go out in the out of space mm -hmm. to travel and to continue traveling after the action. So again, photography here is documenting uh, memory of an action, but at the same time is the bridge, is the start of an action that still existing, mm -hmm. still continuing now, today, after more than 10 years from that moment, this light is traveling. There is, uh, this, there is this continuation and this extension from the medium of photography and the uh, result of the mm -hmm. action. So yeah, I this think is it, the reason. It, yeah, I think it leads very good to what, what you also said in the past. You said the only way to extend the limit is to cross it. This <laughs> is something you just uh, described in a very kind of... Uh, 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 um, tangible way and um, I think it, it leads us also to, to this work The End which is so um, which is such an amazing uh, uh, project and I would like you to, to, to expand a bit on this um, we have sure. also like five works, five stills from this wonderful project and I'm really happy that we have them in the collection so we show the images now. We will just scroll through because there are so many amazing images. This, this picture yeah, okay, uh, still, is from the first, like, is from the same body of work of Exotion. Mm -hmm. uh, briefly, I can say this picture was shot in Brooklyn and it was uh, a, like a shooting I did testing the technology before I went to the North Pole. And what you see is a group of cars. Uh, probably you can intersee. Uh, we lost. Uh, yeah, we yeah. Lost the yeah you can intersee uh, that on the top of the car there are like a series of uh, solar panel that are set, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the light, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. the on light top. that is that is coming. Uh, uh, from the bottom of the cars is the light that was present in the same location a few hours before. Uh, I collect light, I storage light, and I move light in mm -hmm. time and space. What that means is light is coming, light is uh, like surrounding the space constantly uh, every day and is coming like, like, uh, into the planet, to the mm -hmm. ionosphere. But 
moving uh, light was my obsession, like uh, mm -hmm. using this light in a different moment uh, was, was the first step to then decide to project this okay. light out. Mm -hmm. okay. Here, what you see is uh, almost like X-ray of mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the reality. Light have the same frequency uh, of the daylight and is scanning uh, and showing you the only part that in a daylight you don't see, the part that usually have shadows. So you see the skeleton of the structure. You see this again, this mystery, this invisible part that is made visible mm -hmm. and is transforming the perception and the space. Yeah, wow, yeah, sorry. We nearly oh, missed yeah. this interesting work. <laughs> Um, so we can still, I would like now to, to, to go to the end, to this, not to the end, but to the work, the end, because uh, this is so fascinating. And it really is also about this kind of uh, extend the limit and to, to cross it and um, do something really special. This is the first work of it. Do we have the, the slide now? No? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't see the slide. Neither. <laughs> Here we are. Here's the slide. This wonderful object. Also, again, you you take photography or, or an action or a video kind of and bring it also in a three dimensional uh, uh, way to, to to build a sculpture out of it with this rough material and the very subtle material. So it's it's a it's a very interesting way to combine as well and to 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 to. to create something like a sculpture out of this invisible uh, uh, ideas which are behind. But maybe you expand in general on the project, which is so fascinating. Yeah, the uh, reason I, I think this is important to start and introduce you to uh, the end is uh, because uh, this was really, this, this project was really challenging. Uh, what you see now, uh, of course, is, uh, is a pedestal with a laptop and uh, you intersee uh, like uh, something that seems a uh, uh, sunset and appear as a photograph. In reality, when you are in the space and you approach the sculpture, you discover that there is a movement, there's a strong movement. And uh, uh, to do this project, I um, record um, a video of a plane flying straight to the sun at the moment the sun is setting. But the plane is moving at almost the same speed of the planet rotation and in the opposite way. So these two things are happening at the same time. The plane is going uh, like is going to the sun at the moment. The sun mm -hmm. is prospectively going away, and the, there is a force, the crazy force, in between these two things. Mm -hmm. So what I did there was uh, I try to stop time. I try to stop mm -hmm. time, and to do it, I have to force space. This plane is flying and is flying at an impossible speed. Mm -hmm. And that thing obviously can happen only for a segment of time. But I was able to produce nine minutes of a never ending, what I define wow. a never ending mm -hmm. sunset. Mm -hmm. So when the public get close to the sculpture, you see this vibration, uh, you see that there is something strong going on mm -hmm. But the size and the mm. volume of the sculpture is, is small and is, there is an intimacy that you, like an intimate uh, uh, feeling you have with the sculpture. That mm. on the other side, in, for DN Action One, is uh, monumental. You enter into these spaces yeah, and like your you see your, it now. Mm -hmm. 
your scale as a human being is basically the same Understood. scale of yourself in the real landscape. So mm -hmm. you are emerged into uh, a series of architectural elements and projections where the sun is uh, uh, rising around mm -hmm. you. And uh, in, for the N action five, the action is uh, almost the opposite of uh, the N action. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, for the N action one is the opposite of action five, mm -hmm. the piece we, we saw before. Um, what I did in this case, I collaborate with uh, um, cameramen that were filming the sun at the moment was rising in over 30 location uh, in Latin America. And uh, what happened is that they were preparing to film the same day, exactly the same day that uh, it was the anniversary of Galileo Galilei. Mm -hmm. that... Yeah, this. So, so it's and it's 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 something so beautiful. At the same time, it's like you stop the the time and the rotation of the Earth, and it's something. It has something dystopic as well, and in this beauty. Um, uh, could you expand of, on this a bit on this uh, aspect of you stop the time and. Um, uh, create like something like the end of the, the, the like an apocalypse, you know, things are ending, as you said, the end. Uh, in reality, this work, this specific uh, um, video installation and photographs are talking about a collective action that is able to extend the perception of the space. And uh, we usually encounter the sunrise or the sunset in a really private way or like we we, we associate it with something really romantic and personal mm -hmm. but we forget that is a cosmo like a, a, a universal cosmological event mm -hmm. is happening everywhere and actually that line the horizon and our perception of a sunset or a sunrise, it's just a, like, a, it's just a joke. It's just the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Like it's just the fact that we are here, if we move up like 10 kilometers, we don't see the same mm -hmm. thing. And if we keep going, we are gonna realize that the sunset and the sunrise doesn't exist over there or have another, completely another form. So uh, the end is the beginning in reality. It's not the end of anything. It's yeah. just the beginning of something else. It's the beginning of uh, a space intended to be extended, intended mm -hmm. to, be, to, be, to be live as an experience. Mm -hmm. So you get into a space where the same day you perceive all of this sun coming up and the colors are completely different because the environment is changing. The humidity, the wind, uh, the temperature of the air is changing. And that reminds us that whatever is between us, my eyes and the, 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 the whatever point in the space on the horizon uh, is a filter and is a filter that is made by a lot of elements are invisible. Mm -hmm. So is uh, if you just like scroll and you go to through these images, you see the sun is almost uh, the same force mm -hmm. in the center mm -hmm. of them and the landscape change so much and the color change because the space between the body and the sun is a kaleidoscope of mm -hmm. uh, phenomena that are real phenomena. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, it was, a, it, it was a really special for me to start this project as a video and then in the, at the same time documenting the set and shooting uh, some uh, specific image on some specific set 
with uh, specific technology because uh, here we were shooting with Hasselblad. So there is a crazy quality oh, in the mm -hmm. pictures. Yeah, you can uh, see it. Yeah, have a look. Yeah, great. And when you are there in person, you uh, realize the power of that moment, mm. the power of this sun that is there and is the same for all of them. So you can get into a, a space where you are surrounded by the same cosmological event that is in the center of the picture and all of the rest is changing. Mm. And uh, it means uh, in a way to lose our control to lose control on the idea we have, like we're, our way to impose ourselves in the landscape and realize that the, 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 the phenomenon itself is abstract and is powerful and is really wild. Oh, great, thank you. It's wonderful. I would now like to jump to another phenomenon. You, you have been... Uh, um, have you been occupied with um, it and it's very actual it's really has a momentum right now because at the beginning of this month the Nobel, Nobel Prize winners in physics were Sir Roger Penrose, Reinhard Gente, Andrea Guess and they researched the phenomenon of black holes something you have been um, occupied with some years ago in your work study on a rotation rotating black hole and study on gravity can you talk a bit about your into investigations into these topics and especially into this topic of the black holes would be great. Sure, sure. In, uh, in 2012, I, uh, I met Eloy Beato, that is uh, one of the maximum experts in black holes in Latin America. Mm -hmm. We met in Mexico and I invite him to collaborate with me for a performance and then I asked him if it was possible to describe a black hole through the mathematical language. And uh, I did it because uh, by that time, we didn't have an image to, to uh, confirm the existence of, of this phenomenon. That happened only recently. But uh, mm -hmm. also now that we have an image, we have an image of something that is the environment, well, like how a black hole influenced light around it. But mm -hmm. we don't, we can see a black hole, we can't. So mm -hmm. this impossibility generating me the necessity to try to describe it. And to describe it, I ask uh, him to describe it mathematically. So he was uh, uh, working for several months to produce an equation that then was used for, for, to, to produce a sculpture is a 36 long uh, sculpture. Mm -hmm. This is, is a project. what we see right here, right? This yes. is what we see in this slide. Yeah, I, I, I presented in uh, uh, several different configuration. It could be presented as a line, a long line, or a set of line, or even a fragment of calculation mm -hmm. distributed in the architecture. What is special is that the, the, the glass I use for this sculpture is a, a cobalt blue Murano glass. It's mm -hmm. producing a really intense and electric blue, almost on the border of invis invisibility and uh, is alterating the perception of all of the other colors, including white. So when you cross a corridor like this, you basically cross uh, space, space and time and you just mm -hmm. alterate your, your body. And this specific image was shot at the Mart Museum. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, this piece was uh, the connection between two different poles of the same space. Uh, a, a space of transit, uh, a real like uh, door to another side of the space of the museum. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so we, we, we heard a lot about already about this, uh, um, the equ equations, mathematic as mathematical equations. And uh, you said the power of number is important to you. 
And um, yeah, you describe also numbers as or numbers are invisible systems which surround us and create life in manifold ways. And can you tell us what fascinates you most about numbers? And also, I'm a bit curious, have you ever studied science in a formal way? Or how did this uh, happen, your interest in these numbers? <laughs> no, actually, I never study. Uh... And it, it was a, a thing that happened. Like I studied medicine, I did other things, but uh, it was a, it was something that happened. Like, uh, uh, and I just connect with numbers, and I'm still fascinating after many years. I use different way to communicate. Some work are uh, specifically um, connect with the. Uh, sign language, sound less. Uh, my interest for number uh, is uh, for sure related to with the power of numbers and mm -hmm. the fact that numbers surround us constantly, mm -hmm. even when we don't see them. And uh, number are in 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 the in. in in the back of our life and uh, they are magic. They have, uh, in my uh, opinion, they also have the capacity to influence our life. Uh, I see also a side of, uh, uh, um, a side of uh, spiritualism in numbers and uh, some number were a revolution, uh, a big revolution for the society. Some of the equation that appear here uh, definitely changed completely our um, way to understand the mm. universe. They allow us to fly to the moon and uh, they, mm change our idea of time they they allow us to use technology um there are uh, equations that were closed into books for so many years and then all of a sudden became fundamental they're like uh, this image bring me back to the place where i am as i said when we we open this conversation. I'm at the Matatoyo, and is the place where I'm presenting this monumental solo show. is a huge space uh, of 1,300 square meter, really high. And here I'm collaborating with a group of researchers from La Sapienza in Roma. If we go a little uh, ahead with other images, mm -hmm. we can see the yeah, mm -hmm. first, the first, the next one, I guess. Yeah, the next one. Can we go on? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the next one is giving an idea mm -hmm. forward. Forward. There is a picture that where you see the entire architecture. So, next one. Next. Ah, yeah, you can, yeah, there you, you can see the Marco. It's a Marco in Rome, the Marco Testaccio, right? Matatoio. Yeah, so what you're seeing here is exactly what I'm seeing in front of me. So I'm like uh, in the entrance. Uh, you can probably uh, tell from the gray in the back, uh, the entire space was painted with this neutral gray and mm -hmm. is uh, the space of the action. Mm -hmm. These people you see are uh, performing uh, every day uh, since like from morning to night and they were doing it for three months nonstop. Wow. So the entire space changed. The entire space was uh, transforming and what they do, they are actually calculating really complex calculation important statement for science are now on the walls and uh what you see at the really end of the space over there is a uh, uh, site specific installation with uh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. the a series of equation that were site specifically designed for the museum mm -hmm. and uh, uh, connect with the project you saw before mm -hmm. 
So this, this is actually, is... yeah, it's actually already answering my question I had to what extent does architectural design play a part in your performances and how also okay, this performative aspect came into your practice. It's something which uh, at, a, at a certain point got more important to you, I have the impression. And when you see it, uh, the images we saw, they are the performers, you also bring the equations in relationship to the human body with this when you include the the performers and also it's again about time and actually time and space action and space and time and to bring all of this together i have the impression this work really brings a lot of your thoughts together yeah that that's really true uh, i have to say that probably since the beginning of my career action like are the center of everything. Uh, originally, I was producing action. My body was crossing things, touching things, doing things physically, and still, still. But now more than ever, I uh, believe in collaboration, uh, the extension of my body, the extension of my capacity, the extension of my knowledge, is in other people. I believe in the group. Mm -hmm. I really believe we live in a moment that we need to be together even when we can't. We mm -hmm. have to build a community that is based of, on, on, on the power of the collective and not the separation. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, this project in Rome gave me so much in a moment where uh, everything is far, even this call, even this um, conversation with you, I know there are people over there that are mm -hmm. listening to me, but not seeing them. Mm -hmm. I would like to see them. I would yeah. like to hug them. Yeah. I, I would like to be with them. So we are living a moment of uh, invisibility of yeah. uh, sometimes emotion and action. And in Rome, these people were really there, where they mm -hmm. were there every day and people and the public were encountering them uh, almost in a metaphysical, uh, mm -hmm. um, metaphysical uh, uh, visit because imagine to come from the street in Rome and all of a sudden you get into this space and you see all of them working like dressed white and uh, yeah. calculating is uh, is really powerful to be in the space yeah. and and is a real happening and is mm. happening nonstop. Now, so, yeah. So that's yeah. why the answer is uh, performers like performance were with me since the beginning and now like more and more collaboration are uh, helping to extend the scope of my work, the scale of my work the shape mm -hmm. of my work. Yeah, thank you. And as you're saying, especially in these times, you know, where, where community is nearly impossible. And, and, and also what, what I, I experienced with your work that uh, really the audience is appreciating such a lot and engaging so much with it because they want to get to know the what is behind this, what is this, what, what, what you are showing and to understand also the invisible behind it and to, to feel it, experience. This is uh, really something your work does. I, I, I saw people really standing in front of the photographs and <laughs> trying to, to get what it is. It's, it's wonderful. And also we can now actually open to, to the audience. And I had, I saw in between, there was one question from an anonymous and, uh, um, a listener of this talk and the question was why are you so obsessed with light andrea <laughs> <laughs> wow that's a difficult question i don't yeah. know if i'm prepared we want to challenge you <laughs> <laughs> somebody wants to challenge you hi <laughs> uh, i have to say i i didn't realize i was obsessed with light but then i have to admit probably uh, light is, uh, is a force and light is surrounding us all the time. And uh, mm, 
I guess I really want to use the power of something so uh, untouchable and 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 power, powerful enough to give light to everything. Something that is mm-hmm. alimenting the trees, that is providing life, mm-hmm. so is generating constantly generating. So is a natural attraction for one of the most powerful energy surround us. Yeah, thank you. Do we have another question? I think I, I think I saw one. No, there was one in the chat function, I believe. Yes. Aha, uh-huh, there's a very nice comment. Also again, yeah. anonymous. Um, I love the Higgs Ocean series. I saw your works in Moscow for the biennial there, and I have been thinking about it ever since. Wow. I think it's one of the most powerful works about time and space. Is that also part of the Deutsche Bank collection? Unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> I love, uh, and uh, this was a question. Okay, yeah, I, I can answer it. Unfortunately, it's not part of the Deutsche Bank collection. <laughs> Let's see what the future brings. <laughs> I don't know, do we have um, another question? Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, Celine Benoit is asking any project for 2021, Andrea, what is brings the future? What does the future bring? Yes, I have a really important project I will present in Mexico and uh, uh, probably in February, let's cross finger. <laughs> yeah, yes. So in February 2021, I will present a uh, uh, new body of work. I'm, I'm working on a new series, photographic series. I've been working for the last two years and that's going to be the premiere for that. And also I'm working on others, uh, sculpture and other works and like, uh, let's cross finger because we already, yeah, yeah. We, you, don't know. we already know that it's, it's better to don't talk about the future in terms of, uh, uh, specific date now so yeah. I also I also have a lot of other things I like a really important uh, museum show in, in 2021 were scheduled but I don't know if it's going to be 2020 yeah. <laughs> 22 or 23 it's a big so. uncertainty at the time being yeah we, we all don't know what what's go- what will be the future bring yeah what the future brings let's as you say let's keep our fingers crossed but we have incredibly reactions in here so uh, Vera Rose Francois Laurent is uh, saying writing incredible talk brilliant can you tell us more about how your work engaged with time and photography again a long and complicated <laughs> <laughs> question I think I said something in the beginning of this conversation, yeah. but I'm going to try to uh, uh, repeat it and explain uh, how I, I really perceive time. Uh, time is uh, this... Uh, the photography have the power to stop uh, a fragment of this time, and that's a big responsibility on my part as mm-hmm. an artist working with photography the moment I decide to freeze that fragment, I would like uh, also to include the possibility of the future in that moment. Mm -hmm. Something that exists and resists to to time Mm -hmm. itself. So for for me, I don't don't see a work where that statement is not uh, visible. Like uh, this series of uh, uh, photographs of the sun that was freeze in a specific moment, they are the bridge to the entire cycle of the sun in the sky. This mm-hmm. rotation, this, yeah. this cycle that is a cycle that connect with the, the entire time, the entire time. Good. We have lots of com- and comments and questions, so it's really great. So um, I have Mario Levenhagen. 
he is writing, didn't Albert Einstein said in 1916 that he just want to care about light? I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> um, we have to look it up. Uh, Mario Levenhagen. Um, I'm not sure what Albert Einstein said in 1916. <laughs> um, maybe, yeah, possibly you're right. But I have another thing from Ashish Monga. Hello, Andrea. We love your photograph of the fighter, fighter jet. We see it every day. Could you please discuss the process you went through in setting up the logistics of the photograph? Oh, that's oh a lot. Of, we, we, we need another. We need <laughs> another talk on this, right? <laughs> another talk next week. I'm available. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, it's, um, uh, I guess. I, it's, oh, yes, I you can, did. Mario is answering. I'm sorry. I can, I can just say a, a few things. I, I, it was it was a long process. It, it wasn't easy, and uh, I trained myself. And uh, as you can imagine, I was in the back of uh, one of those planes. What make really special the action is that what you see the plane that you are seeing is kind of like the mirror of my plane. Mm -hmm. So I cross wow. myself the sound barrier any time I was shooting any time. A lot of time I was working for month and like is a difficult shooting because you don't control the focus. The speed is insane. So yeah. uh, in, 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 in the process of shooting, then uh, shooting thousands of images, you, you save a few and uh, the magic of those few that became uh, art pieces is that the focus between the distance of these two objects in the space, these two plane is uh, uh, existing because the distance is established by the pilot. So before we start, we decide Incredible. what was the distance we, we have to try to maintain to have the full focus of the picture. Wow. And then uh, like, you imagine a, a minimum movement, a minimum change of the wind yeah. that was like, was moving the, 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 the plane uh, a little bit and the, fo the, the picture was on focus. So whoever have that picture in their collection, they know that there is a really, really um, precise uh, detail. So you see things, you see the pilot, you see everything because this this object and uh, this object is moving with the other one. We are moving to there together like two car on the highway. So we basically move at that speed, but, but together and the rest is in the back. So there's a- wow. uh, Yeah, it's crazy. In, yeah, I can't imagine really. So I have one comment from Mario Levenhagen. Again, he says, yes, he did. So Einstein uh, said that he care, wanted to care about light only. And Mario Levenhagen is asking you also something. So you are a real jet pilot now by yourself, Andrea? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, like I, I, I did it in 2014, 2015, and I'm still thinking about it. I really would like to do it again, but mm -hmm. it was a, a specific moment and uh, uh, I don't know if I will ever repeat it. It was a, a really, really I special think, moment. Yeah, I guess so. So I have two, two, more, um, two more questions and then I guess uh, this, um, we will close uh, the discussion. Um, I have one from uh, Lorenzo Perini Natali. Ciao Andrea, where are you showing the new works in, where are, you, where are you showing the new work in Mexico? I will show the new work with Curro Galleria, Galleria Curro in Guadalajara. Ah. And uh, we, uh, I, I will announce this once we know exactly the date, it will be announced. Uh, hopefully, it will be February. And uh, okay, so Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Ciao, Lorenzo. Ciao. <laughs> so, and, and I have one uh, comment also and one question uh, from Katie Hammer. 
Um, congrats on all your work. It's been fascinating to watch your process evolve. Do the equations in the Rome project have definite endings? What do you say? I'm sorry, I lost you for a sec. Um, do the equations in the Rome projects have definite endings? Hmm. Interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like uh, the this body of work is growing and changing, and expanding and changing form. Uh, so it is also true that like. Uh, the our evolution our way to investigate doesn't really end and uh so we will see okay so nene in the other direction sorry i talked to you too no kidding <laughs> and there's still no i had this one but there's another one in i just it's so nice so i i am steak i want to see this one but i can't see it right now yeah Oh, another, uh, another question. Hi, Britta and Andrea. Thank you for the talk. I really appreciate it. Andrea, it's from M. Steak. Um, Andrea, I first noticed your work maybe 10 years ago when you did a series of photos of black balloons suspended above a rocky desert. I don't remember the title of the series. Could you talk a little about that? Um, I am now, now here, she knows it's the death of an image series. That's correct. Yeah, it's a really important series, and um, uh, it, it, it was a, a, a challenge work because I travel around that. Like she know, like I'm trying to explain for everybody who doesn't know that, that is a uh, is a series of work produced with just black balloons fill with ilio glass uh, gas and install it outside in, in the landscape and place it in a way that they rebuild galaxy uh, universe and they move with the wind and wow. it's different i'm sorry that we don't have a picture yeah. to show but it, next time I, andrea next time <laughs> <laughs> it will be a pleasure to discuss yeah. about that uh, what I can say about that series, it, it, the way I was working uh, was really pioneeristic. Uh, I was shooting uh, with analog as I did for all my entire career, but then the result was so absurd that people thought was like uh, manipulated because you were seeing this black spot uh, spreading out and exploding on this wow. uh, desert and, it, it, and the quality of the picture uh, was, uh, was special with a lot of details. But then getting close, you were seeing the structure that was sustaining them, this little concrete base, uh, metal wire, nylon, mm network that uh, basically I was exposing the uh, the backstage of the project itself in uh, in a visible way everything was exposed okay and the effort and and mm -hmm. uh, and that one image was again a, a way to extend uh, the idea of architecture photography, mm -hmm. landscape photography, space, and, uh, and time. Wow. So this was um, Matthias Steak, by the way, and he sh he's saying, thank you, um, I love your work. Again, goes to you. And Mario Levenhagen, and this is the last, um, last uh, uh, question we will have. He's, he has the last, not the last word, but the last question. How many times did you break supersonic while shooting? Ooh, uh, I would say at least 30, probably more. How many? I didn't get it. 30. 30 three wow. zero. Yes. Supersonic artist. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Great. So, yeah. Thanks. This was really exciting. Grazie mille. Thank you, Andrea. I guess, um, and it was thank you to the audience also for all this, uh, um, yeah, the engagement and the question. And yeah, let's see whether we, we repeat this uh, when when we have 
a new body of work of yours and we can talk about Mexico. Let's see. Yes, I would love to. I would love to. Okay. So I want to I wanna thank everybody. It was really a pleasure. And I'm sorry I cannot see you and uh, sending you uh, ag to everybody and hope to stay safe. Hope to see you soon. See you. Thanks a lot. Thank Ciao. you for Andrea. Ciao. Thank you. Grazie mille. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.